Okay, so we're gonna start the water sling here and just go over the placement line. So this is a large bag, beware of that. So this turning hole down here is gonna be about that big. So I would not recommend this bag if you have arthritis unless you have somebody who can help you with the turning hole. So this three lines is our zipper placement line. These two lines are gonna be where we're gonna place our um, drawstring, if you're using the option, and our actual exterior, um, our exterior lines. I'm sorry, for the open top. So it has an open top and then the zipper, okay. So before we get started, let's go over the parts and pieces here. So I should have switched the lining out, but I didn't, I apologize. So we have two of these panels, seven inch by nine inch for the zipper pocket lining. Then we have our main bag lining, which is two pieces, one seven by 10.5 and one seven by 14 inches. And we'll end up seaming those together. Then we have this panel, which is gonna be up here. It's a little bit generous. I may have to cut that down. Um, then these are the drawstring panels. And I've gone ahead and marked a one quarter inch line here. Can you see everything? My setup is weird here today. So we're gonna line that up with those placement lines I mentioned. Uh, these are D-ring strap connectors. And just to reinforce this a little bit, I put a strip, a two inch by five eighths inch strip of Sofuse Plus in there, just to give it a little bit more strength. These are our zipper tabs that we're gonna use for the front zipper. And then of course we have our long piece of this vinyl that's for the main bag. So it's important to remember that for this particular bag, um, it's, you can't use directional material unless you seam it together on your sewing machine. So before we get started, I went ahead and um, cut these to size and then I folded in and measured in five eighths inch on either side and then fold it into that. But I do wanna put some double stick tape on this just because we're gonna put the drawstring through this. And when we're pulling the cording in for the drawstring, I don't want it to bump on that seam allowance and push it up. So we're gonna just, and you can use glue if you don't have double stick tape, just to glue that side down on each piece. So my first uh, rendition of this drawstring option, I double folded it and had it interfaced and it was way too thick. So I didn't interface this. Um, I hope it'll be okay. So we'll see, but I'm gonna just put that strip on both all four sides of this, the short sides, so I can fold it in. Okay, last one. And like I said, you can use a fabric glue here to do this too something that's permanent and preferably won't seep through to the, the fabric. And then I'm just gonna fold it back down to that line that I already have it folded to and ironed. I'm just press it firmly so it sticks. I'm using um, double stick tape that I got off of Amazon. I'll put it in the link below. I know there's lots of options out there for you, but this actually, uh, is made by 3M. I can tell by the, well, it says like Seuss Quang or whatever, but this is the same stuff that's offered by other vendors um, because I can tell by the lettering of the release paper, but it's a lot cheaper on Amazon. Actually, the first set I got was on eBay of all places, but I couldn't find, it was so long ago that I bought it couldn't find that vendor anymore. Okay. So, let this one off kilter a little bit. That's okay. All right. Then we're going to go ahead and fold these aside and put them up, fold them back and put them aside for now. And the first thing we're going to do is start our zipper. I didn't even get my zipper prepared. I'm sorry about that. Hopefully I have a color sitting here that'll match. Okay, 
Okay. So, we're gonna need our zipper tabs. I'm gonna set those aside a second. So first thing we need to do is line up our zipper um, with our placement line. If you're using a number three zipper, you're gonna line it up right in between those two outer lines. There's pictures in the PDF to show you how to do that. I'm using number five, so I'm gonna find the line behind the zipper that is formed from the negative space where the zipper teeth open and line that up with the center placement line. And we are gonna trim the zipper down. So unlike other bags, I did cut mine way too large. You don't need to cut it that large because we're gonna trim it down. So the zipper, all the lines, or I should say all the seams that have anything to do with the zipper are going to be double lines. So they're gonna be partial stitches so that you can move the zipper pull out of the way. I did it that way because I don't want to risk you starting the stitch and then not realizing when to stop it before you hit the zipper pull. So I'm forcing the machine. So if you're on a single, I'm sorry, if you're on a multi needle machine, you need to be aware of that. Now, most multi needle machines will have no trouble getting around the zipper pull. But what if you have your zipper pull like this and you're trying to stitch here? You're going to hit it. So that's why I have partial seams and I'll instruct you in the PDF when to move the zipper to the right or left. So I'm gonna go ahead and follow this down and make sure this line matches up with that center placement line. If you've done any of my bags that have this zipper tabs, you'll know how to do this. I always like to zip, um, tape down one side first. So in this case, I'm taping the bottom side down and get that nice and straight. And then I'll just put a couple pieces at the top just so that it doesn't um, doesn't come loose. And for this very first step, when we're stabilizing the zipper to the stabilizer, then we do want to keep that zipper pull out of the way because it's going to stitch down to here and here. So this is a, a regular seam. It's not a partial like you will see here in a few minutes. All right, so now I'm gonna run step two, which is gonna tack this down. Okay, now we're gonna run step three, which is gonna give us our placement for the right side tab. Just a short stitch, so. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and move all this extra tape off. And I'm using 3M transport tape. And I usually can get about three uses out of these tapes. So yeah, I fill up my machine with them and have them ready so I can reuse them. And always trim out any of your uh, tail tails while you're going because otherwise they'll get stuck in the seam and you won't be able to turn, trim them out and you'll be very irritated. So trim those as you go. Okay. So once we tack this down, um, you can trim this down close to the stitches to keep it out of your final seam. So close to the placement stitches. My scissors got really dull probably from cutting through zipper tape like this. <laughs> so it doesn't want to cut. I need special scissors just for this purpose. So we're going to trim that off. I'm going to take a lighter to it right quick. You do it real fast, it'll burn the zipper and out your stabilizer. Okay, oops, and I came unthreaded. So I'm going to show you on film this first zipper tab because it's, um, and then you can, then you'll do the second one on your own. So now we're going to take our zipper tab and we're going to center it over the zipper at that placement line and then we want to tape it down because we always want to use tape even if it looks like it won't move on you you don't want to have a risk of any opportunity to get your hand in here because if you do you're going to get a needle through it and if it comes loose your instincts are going to be to reach in and try and grab a hold of it okay so 
Um, this is step four. And I do cut the zipper tabs longer. Just, it's a little bit wasteful, but that way you don't have to fuss around with making sure you have it tight or not. Just easier that way. Okay, again, I'm gonna trim my tails. All right, and you can go ahead and remove the tape and then fold it back. Make sure you're pressing against a firm surface when you fold it back and make sure it's even. And then you just go ahead and tape it down. And then we're gonna run step five, which is gonna be the top stitching. Okay, I'm gonna do six, seven, and eight to do this one. So we'll have to move our zipper over here, out of the way. And one thing I like to do is put a piece of tape where that top stitching or that zipper tack down ended because otherwise the presser foot might hit it when it, you go through. So I'm gonna do um, six, seven, eight off camera and I'll be right back. Okay, I lied, I might as well show you. They're fast stitches, so we're gonna run six. We're gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna trim out that extra uh, zipper tape. Move the tape here. take the lighter to it so just raise it up and just like that across it did you guys see that I'm sorry no won't you won't get your your um interfacing then or stabilizer you probably it's probably overkill because it's going to be stitched down in two places so it should be fine you shouldn't have any issues with the zipper coming undone but I've seen some bad stories about this striped zipper tape so I'm just trying to be a little overly cautious. All right. Okay and then we're gonna run seven which is the tack down and then we're gonna fold it back and run eight. And I find that if my tape, this needle goes through the tape, it's usually okay. It doesn't usually get it too gummy. But if it does start to gum up on you, then you can just run some rubbing alcohol along the needle and that'll take all the gum off. Oops, I missed a thread tail over here. And I do have a rather large zipper pull, so just be mindful of that. The vibrations of the machine can make it come loose. Okay, this is eight. Okay, awesome. So now we're gonna go ahead and start our lining, our zipper pocket lining along with the panel. That's gonna be the main part of the bag. So we wanna push our Zipper pull over. Uh, one second. I'm gonna sit, put, move our zipper pull over here to the left. Okay, we're gonna go turn to the back of the hoop. And then the bottom of the zipper, we wanna line up one of our zipper powder zipper pocket panels, which is the seven inch by nine inch panels. And the bottom one will be a little longer, but it's just easier to have them be the same size. So you wanna place this so the lining side is facing down 
And one thing I forgot to mention, and I don't have my ruler in. Um, before we continue here, we get too far out of the way. I'll be right back. Okay, so before we continue and item up, there's a couple of tick marks here, and then there was also some on the zipper. Go ahead and draw out a line. I'm sorry, I only have a Sharpie. But use a ruler. But we're going to just extend those um, tick lines right here because you're going to need that middle mark to match up for your, if you're using the, um, sorry, if you're using the casings for the drawstring. Okay, so in this case, just fold it in half and then you can see the little tick mark on the back here and then line this up upside down. So the pretty side is facing the stabilizer and then we're just gonna tape the corners and the excess is gonna hang over the top of the hoop. And then when you trip, turn this over, just hold on to it like this and it won't come loose. Okay, and now you need your real long panel and this will get a little bit unwieldy when while we're using it. And I went ahead and just folded this in half, made a little notch to show my middle point there. And so this is gonna go facing right side down as well and line that up with the middle, which is right there. So I just pulled the zipper up a little bit. And you're not gonna be able to tape this down all the way because the zipper pull We'll do there. So you just tape it down loosely on the left side. And then when we stop to move the zipper pole, you can tape it down more securely. So we're going to be starting on the right side and going towards the middle. So we want this side taped down well. And then I'm going to put this zipper pole up here. Tape it down for a second out of my way. And so step nine is our first partial step, our partial seam. So we're going to go ahead and let's put the tape here. We'll lift this up in a minute, but you can go ahead and put the tape there for right now. All right. So carefully get everything back underneath your hoop. And if you're on a multi-needle machine, this is a good time to be using your table so that it supports all this material. Okay, then we're going to run step nine. I'm going to show you the first partial seam and then the rest I'll do off camera. So you'll see it goes across. And you see how it pushes this. I wish I had it taped better. That's okay. All right, now you're going to reach under here. If you have to move the hoop, that's okay. I do have the seam... Uh, crossing over itself a couple of stitches so be careful not to dislodge this because your your stitching will then look like it's off kilter okay so again you can go ahead and tape this if you need to all right so I moved it over to that side and I'm going to reposition and make sure that this is positioned well all right and get everything back underneath the hoop make sure your lining didn't come on loose And you can usually do that without taking the hoop off. I just took the hoop off so you have better view. Okay, and now we're gonna run step 10, which is the rest of that seam. And going over that zipper tab is a little bit troublesome. Okay, then we're gonna flip it over to the back and we're gonna run, lay our lining panel down and finger press the seam and then just tape it down like so. And this is gonna get trimmed out in a little bit. Now on the front of the hoop, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna remove the tape, all this tape. Oh, 
and we're gonna carefully fold this down against a firm surface. And then we're gonna finger press that seam. And this tape is actually a little bit wider. The teeth are much thicker than a normal zip number five. So you can see that the, the stitch is very close to it. If you're using a different number five zipper tape, which I don't have any sitting here to show you the difference. I just have been looking at it for so long. I can tell this, this these teeth are a little taller. Okay, so we're gonna zip this down. You can just roll this out of the way here and get back under here. Okay, and we're gonna start with our zipper pull in the right hand side. And then we're gonna run step 11, which is our partial top stitch. And you can see here that I actually could go right across because my zipper pull is right over there. But just to be safe, I'm gonna move it because I don't wanna risk hitting the zipper pull. So if you have to, lift up your presser foot and then just move this all the way to the left side. And then finish 12, we'll finish your top stitching. And I'm going through a lot of layers here, so I'm using a 9014 needle and I may have to switch this to a 100 needle by the time we get to the end. Okay, remove this extra tail here. Okay, now we're gonna run um, a step 13 and 14, and it's a partial um, to tack down the second lining panel, but also it's gonna give us a place to line up this top panel when we get to that to fold it down. So we need to switch to the back of the hoop again, and we're gonna go ahead and um, line down the second lining panel, lay down the second lining panel. You can just line it up with the top of the zipper. Make sure it's on top of here evenly. Don't worry about the stabilizer behind the zipper yet. We're gonna do that in a minute here. So tape this down. And then on the front, you're gonna leave, you don't need to do anything to the front panel. Okay, so it's gonna stitch that lining panel down and also give us a line uh, placement mark for our top panel. So we're gonna start here on the right-hand side and then we're gonna run step 13, which is our partial. And it's gonna be just under that tack down. It reads your zipper pole or your zip, your presser foot. Move your zipper pole to the right and then run step 14. Okay, now we're gonna seam our lining. So before we do that, we wanna switch over to the back of the hoop and we're gonna remove the stabilizer behind the zipper. And you can use a seam ripper, which is what I use, or you can use a um, small scissors. So I like to do, oops, almost got that came, almost came loose. I like to do the part that's on the this side first because the tension allows me to really pull it out of the seam. So I get my zipper, or my seam ripper in here so I can see the needle, the blade, and then I kind of, the tension on it, it'll actually pull that stabilizer right out of the seam. And it's not as important on the top part because the top part you don't really see inside the bag. So then flip it around. And this time when you're doing this top piece, you wanna hold on to the piece you just trimmed away and hold it tautly. So let me trim this or finger press that. Some people like to trim this out first, like after you tack down the zipper. Um, you can do that. I have one of my testers does that. But the one time I did it, it made things loose enough that my top stitching didn't stay neat. So I don't do it that way. I, I don't, if you pull 
good enough and trim it away enough, you don't see the stabilizer in the seam. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and fold this down. And you can just, actually you can just reuse these pieces of tape here. Now, there's gonna be two steps here. If you don't want a deep pocket, like to put a phone in, then you can um, skip this step and you'll run the next step. So one will be for a deep pocket and one will be for a shorter pocket. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this step. My numbers are off because I didn't add this seam. <laughs> Hopefully I'll remember that. I didn't add the second option yet. I just realized it when I was cutting. So this is 15, 16 will be the option for a short pocket. So if I get my numbers off while I'm speaking, please forgive me. Okay, so just kind of roll this up out of the way. Move your zipper pull so it's up here we're going to start like right in here so if this is a little bit off kilter like mine is you might want to trim it out a little bit because you don't want to worry about the presser foot getting stuck there and i did mine did get a little bit off kilter so i'm going to just trim this a little bit i don't want to cut into my zipper tape though down here towards this side it got a little bit off kilter So I'm gonna run 15 and it's gonna, like I said, you need to be careful. It's gonna start over here. It's gonna come down and seam this lining panel and then it's gonna come back around and start back into the left. So I'm gonna run that step and I'll be right back. Okay, so be careful when I just did that. It's getting in line to do the D-ring strap connectors and it kind of went off a little bit there. Okay, so now turn to the back, remove the extra tape and then what you're gonna do is trim this pocket to about one quarter inch. So you wanna come in just like the angle is at that angle and then come down and around and trim it and then leave about one quarter inch. So there's a little bit extra here. I might shorten this piece down. But like I said earlier, it's when it's so close to size, like this was, if I had done seven and a half or seven inches by six and a half, the likelihood of you putting it down the wrong way would be great. So I'd rather have a little bit waste versus you putting it down wrong and then not having enough of the pocket. Okay, now we're gonna run the D-ring strap connectors if you're using those. Oh, I need to rearrange this. We're not gonna run the D-ring strap connectors yet. Sorry about that. <laughs> How did I mess that up? I'll be right back. Sorry about that. So um, we're done with lining this. So we're up to step 17. So I did go in and fix this real quick so I would be saying the right step name. So we can go ahead and move this zipper. Well, actually we're gonna move this again. So we leave this alone. So the first thing we wanna do here is get one of your casings for your um, drawstring. If you're using that option, you don't have to have a drawstring on it, but I gave that option in case you have one of those water bottles that's skinnier at the top and you might want to sip it closer. I don't know. I'm just giving you the option. So this is going to look a little bit upside down because we need to have our casing. So the drawstring is up here, but we're going to put our panels 
the other direction. So I went ahead and put a little notch where the center mark is. So I'm turning this this way so I can see it a little easier. And then I'm gonna get some tape and I'm gonna line up that, this line here, the one quarter inch line I drew. So I'm gonna center the notch. I'm gonna line up the one quarter inch line with this placement line right here, this bottom one. I hope you can see. My camera's at a weird angle. So there's the center notch, and then make sure that this line is lined up with that line there. I'm gonna tape it up here out of the way so that it doesn't get stitched through. Okay, so we're, remember we're upside down right now, but just so you can see better, the center is right there and then it's lined up so it's right on that line. Okay, then we're gonna run step 17 to tack that down. I'm just gonna leave the camera running because it's a short stitch. I think I got mine a little bit off kilter, I did. I can tell because just by looking at it, these sides are not even. So I'm gonna fix that and I'll be right back. In the great scheme of things, that wasn't off that much that it mattered, but since I was there and it was an easy fix, I just figured I might as well fix it. So now we're gonna to turn to the back of the hoop and now we're gonna get the shorter of our two main bag lining panels. So one is 14 inches long and one is 10 and a half inches long. You want the shorter one. Okay. And you're gonna lay it right side facing down, so pretty side down, lined up with that placement line that you just used for the casing. So again, if you need to center it, go ahead and fold it in half and mark it or do a little snip with your scissors. And we wanna center it on that line. And then we're gonna tape it down get my tape open and again we're gonna have this excess hanging over the top of the hoop so we got to be careful when we turn this over so I always like to put my hand here and hold it while I flip it and then I know it's not st stuck underneath and now you're gonna get your small panel which I know mine's probably too long made it two and a half, but I think it needs to be shortened. I'm gonna just dry fit it real quick, make sure. Because it's, you're gonna end up folding it over and I don't want too much fold over under here. Yeah, I'm, I'll be right back. <laughs> now I may have trimmed too much off, but all right, we're just gonna go with it, guys. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and lay this down. Remember, pretty side facing down and then we're gonna tape it. And it should be lined up with this line here, so you kinda of have to see through. Well, you can line it up with the drawn line there too. So that's where you want it lined up with. So the line drawn on the casing, which matches that original placement line. Okay, so. And I'm gonna put a piece here in the middle, just so it doesn't vi the vibrations don't make it come loose. Okay, so now make sure that your lining is still on top, not under didn't get scooted underneath it down there on the hoop while we're doing all that movement. Okay. So now I'm gonna run step 18, and I will be right back. Now this next section, 
is going to be tricky because we want to fold our lining down so that we can top stitch through it. But then when we're done top stitching it, we don't want to have the lining get the top stitch for the bottom panel, this part on it. So we'll have to pull it up again. So first go ahead and finger crease it. And then go ahead and tape it, the corners down. Okay, I'm gonna move my hoop out of the way here so that I can have room to work. Okay, so make sure you're managing this extra material that's our main bag all, all along here. Okay, now get your tape off. And we want to pull this as tautly as we can. Some vinyls are harder to do than others. And I did make this too short. Okay, just stick with the original plan, guys. Don't do what Kimberly told you to do there with trimming that off. It's going to be hard to fold under. That's okay. I'll make it work. Okay, so I'm pulling this as tautly as I can. I'm going to tape it off here. And we can remove this tape over here now, too, so it doesn't get caught in our seams. Our casing is nice and stitched down now. Now the nature of, there's lots of ways, well, I, don't, I shouldn't say there's lots of ways. There's several ways you can do an open bag in the hoop. Um, this is the way I'm doing it. So I, the way I end up doing it, the top seams come very close to each other. Um, and it can be a little hard if you're using vinyl. But, so the back ends up being slightly taller than the front. But once you're in the finished bag, I find it's not that noticeable. Okay, so now we're gonna run this top stitch here. So let me put my hoop back. So we're gonna run step 20, I'm sorry, 19. <laughs> and I'll be right back. Okay, so now we need to flip to the back again and remove this, move this lining out of our way. So we don't wanna stitch through it when we're pushing that top border down okay so now this is the trickiest part of the whole bag really is first we're gonna move our zipper pull over because we're gonna start stitching here so we need to move this over out of the way we can move this tape out of the way now okay and what we need to do is fold under a hem on this panel and you'll be able to do it because you're not gonna trim yours down. You're gonna stick with the measurements I gave you. But you're gonna fold it under such that it meets this line. Not the zipper tack down line, but you can see it's a little bit more bold. This line here that's closer to the zipper. Because we're gonna stitch, the line that's gonna stitch is gonna be right underneath that. So it's just fold it under. And I usually start in the middle and I'm not gonna probably have enough room to fold mine under because I stupidly trimmed it off. I might be able to get a little bit off. I'm gonna run some double snip tape there. You won't have this issue. I'm just gonna run some tape along there and then I'll help hold it for me. That was, <sighs> see I adjusted the width of this. Um, and so I didn't estimate how much I needed to adjust the height of the panel well enough. This will help hold it down. If I can get it loose. That's the only bad thing about this tape it's sticky sticky and sometimes it's hard to get the release okay i'm going to work with this offline because it's going to be a little bit more difficult for me since i trimmed it too small but you're going to have enough that you're going to fold it under make sure the edges are close like that and then it's going to meet that fold line right there so i'll be right back i got it as best as i can so what i'm going to do is um just kind of gently uh something's sticking on my machine here I feel like I must have tape or something stuck here. I'm gonna like just motion through with my uh, presser foot up 
and see if I'm going to hit it at each time. So I'm just telling you that so you can debug it yourself. So I'm going to put this on the hoop. Well, let me get my hoop back in the right position. I think I'm good. I'm just going to go a little bit at a time and we'll see. So we're on step thir or 20 right now. And this is a good time to use something like this because I can already see it starting to come up right there. So, that was really stupid of me to do what I did. I'm going to put a piece of tape there. But you can use your stiletto to help hold it down as the presser foot's coming up on it. Barely made it. Okay, so now you want to move your zipper oh, over to the other side. So I'm carefully going to move this tape off of here since I need to move my zipper over there. All right. And then I'm going to double check that my seam is still even over here because I have the same issue right there. It's coming up. Because I didn't put the, the tape all the way over there, that's why. So I should have extended that double stick tape all the way across. And since I didn't, it's coming up there. Okay. I'm going to put this tape here. And hold this piece down. Again, you're not going to have this issue because you're, you're going to use the instructions, the cutting chart and not cut yours off like I did. Okay, I think that should be good. Okay, now we're gonna run 21, which is the rest of that seam. Okay. Oops. Okay, sorry. That noise at the end of that video is it got stuck right here. Keep an eye for stuff like that because um, then my hoop got stuck. So what you have to do when you recover from something like that, you don't want to, um, your hoop is off kilter when that happens. So you don't want to just start, you know, resuming on the next step because it's most likely that your alignment will be all off. But you don't want to just resume the design either. So what I do is I turn off the machine turn it back on, and when it asks me if I want to resume the design I was working on, I say no. We're going to tape this down, and I got a little bit up winky there. It's okay. We're just going to live with it. So now we're going to the back of the hoop, and now we want to go ahead and um, fold this down, but before we do, we want to get the, um, oh no, we're good there. We'll take the stabilizer out here when we get to that step. So just lay this down, and tape it down, and then we're gonna lay our second panel, the longer one. We want to have a half an inch. I don't have my ruler, so it puts in the instructions. You wanna draw a half an inch beyond this line here so that that's your seam allowance for the closing the bag. But I don't have my ruler handy, so I'm gonna eyeball it. Half an inch on either side. Just draw a line underneath that original die line. And so you want to line up this panel with that half inch line. So your first panel might be a little long, like mine is. So just line it up with that half inch line. Okay, and put some tape up here because it's going to stay in this position for a couple of steps. And if you haven't already, now is the time to move to a larger needle. Okay, so this is all taped down. Hold it at the top again to make sure. Okay. And now we're going to go ahead and li lift this panel up out of the way. And we're going to seam our lining. So step 22 is going to give us a seam on our lining panels. So just make sure 
when the presser foot is moving that you've got all this bulk out of the way. And if you're using the big hoop like I am, make sure you're not hitting this back of your wall. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and let you see this because it's a short step. So 22. So I leave as big of an opening as I can, but I have to have enough of the seam, the lining seam together as well to hold it steady. Okay, now we're gonna get in position for our pleat marker. And that's what I call it. So in order to form the gusset, we create a pleat at the bottom of the bag. So leave the back as it is, but fold the, this exterior back panel down. And we're going to run step 23. And this is going to be really deep pleat if you've done my other bags. So we need a lot of width at the bottom of the bag for the water bottle. Make sure you trim those tails because they will get stuck in your seam. So now when we look here, there's a tiny little stitch here and here, there's a leg. We're going to fold the exterior panel up against that, pant, that little pleat. And if you do it correctly, you should be able to see your base line from when we first stitched it on color step one. So we're going to fold it up and tape it. And again, you're leaving the back as it is for right now. We're only pleating the, folding against this bottom pleat on the top. Okay. Don't pull too hard. You don't want to pull that stitch out. So right here, everything should be even. And then we're going to run 24. Be mindful as it comes across here because you don't want it to get stuck there. Okay. I don't know why it gave me that long tail. Remove your tails. All right. Now we're going to go to the back of the hoop. And we're going to prepare for the final uh, pleat. So go ahead and fold this down against that pleat marker. If you have to uh, roll up the lining on the bottom to avoid a hoop attachment, then make sure you do that. So again, right here is our top. We're going to fold this down against that gently. Finger crease this and then tape it down again. I just do it with my tape. Okay, and then we're going to do the same thing on the front. And this gets a little bit awkward because these panels are really long. Let's go ahead and pull this tape off. And then you're gonna fold down against these pleat markers now. And then tape it down. Okay, then we're gonna run our last pleat marker, 25. And then it's gonna get in position to do the D-ring strap connectors. So again, I'm going to be careful when it comes across here that it doesn't come off there and roll off. So I'm going to raise my presser foot when it finishes this piece. Okay. 
because I don't want it to get stuck in that fold right there. See what I mean? It could have gotten stuck in that fold. And you can tape that down or use a scrap piece of tear away to avoid that happening. Okay, make sure your lining is still okay down here. Okay, now we're gonna run the placement for our Deung strap connectors. And I'm gonna be, again, mindful when it goes across here to make sure it doesn't hit anything. Oh, see, it just wanted to get stuck again there. So I'm gonna put some tape here because I don't want that to happen over here. This is thicker vinyl, so that's why it's doing that. Let me put a piece over here. Make sure that doesn't happen again. Okay. Carefully flip this around. Okay, now you want to get your D-ring strap connectors. Your D-rings. So I just had my hair. What did I do with them? I'm using three quarter inch. Normally I like to line this up with the top placement line, but in this case, I'm gonna line it up with this because we have that drawstring casing there. So you fold it over in half around the D-ring strap connector and then get a nice piece of tape so it goes all the way across it. And so you're gonna go ahead and lay that. So it's about aligned with this top stitching here and about a half an inch beyond the placement line. Be very careful that you don't unhoop anything here. I need to redo that tape. So it would be easier on this side to see. So I'm gonna line it up with that top, this top stitching line. And then a half, extend a half inch over the placement line. I'm going to run step 27 and I'll be right back. Okay, so those are all placed down. Now this vinyl is kind of a little bit wanting to come back up on itself. Um, so what I'm going to do is tape those D-ring strap connectors down because I don't want them to come ajar when we're going working on the next steps. Carefully pull the tape away here. And I'm gonna tape this down because our seam is gonna be right along here. So we don't want it to hit that D-ring strap connector accidentally, the presser foot. So just kind of tape it down. You can move the tape over here because we're done on this side. Okay, so now we're ready to lay our second casing down. Which I just lost. I'll be right back. Sorry about that. So before we place this, this one's gonna be in our way and we don't want that to happen. So we need to roll this down and pull it out of the way. And I'm gonna tape it down on both sides because we don't wanna accidentally stitch through this. Okay, now we wanna lay this one. Um, we're gonna center it on here and then on this line, but this case, we want it to be the folded side pointing this way because we're gonna do 
our exterior on top of here and then it's going to come and fold to the back so we need this to get caught in that exterior seam okay so did i notch this okay there's the center and then again i need the line that quarter inch line to be right on that placement line that we stitched earlier And you can kind of see that it does line up with the second one or the first one however you want to look at it okay so now i'm going to run step 28 and i'll be right back Okay, so that's stitched down. So now what I want to do is make sure that I pulled that other piece forward enough. So I'm going to undo the tape and roll this up because the final seam is going to come right along here. And I think I do have enough. Oh, pull that up. Yeah, see, I have a good space there. So I'm going to retape this down. Okay, now we're ready to roll the lining and the exterior up to do the last couple of steps. So before we do that, we wanna get rid of this stabilizer behind here, because that's where we're gonna open the bag. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna get our seam ripper underneath the seam, do it over here, because this is where the stitches end. And we're gonna gently glide it across there, and the tension on the hoop is gonna help pull that stabilizer out of that seam, okay? And then do your small scissors carefully because you don't want to unhoop this at this point because we're almost done. So I'm gonna carefully come over here and then I'm gonna try and trim as close to that line there. I actually need to turn this around so it's facing me the other direction. So I wanna try and trim as close to that casing tack down as I can get without disrupting my stabilizer. So I'm going to come over here and then I'm going to trim. I'm going to just keep using my seam ripper. I feel better with that. And then just get as close to that casing line as you can get. And go all the way over to the end. And then just use your regular scissors to trim off the sides. like that, okay? Now you're gonna roll this lining up to the top such that the bottom is folded against the last pleat marker, okay? So fold this lining up, and again, you want this folded against that last pleat marker. So just like before, you should be able to see the seam there, and then tape this tautly to the top. I'm taping it really close on the edges over here because that's where the stabilizer is the most stable. I'm gonna put another piece right here in the middle, but I'm not gonna press hard on it because I don't want that to sink in. I'm just gonna lightly put it there and then I'm gonna press it firmly from the front. Okay, so now I'm gonna flip this over. And now I'm gonna go ahead and press firmly where that lining is. Right? And then we're gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna pull the exterior, get that rid of the tape down here. I missed some jumps here, some tails. And I'm gonna to have to switch to a 116 needle to get through all this. But you may, if you're using cotton woven, you can probably just use a 90, 14. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna fold up against that last pleat marker. And I'm gonna tape this down. And this is where you're gonna need some scrap tear away. 
what happens is the presser foot is going to come off the end here or attempt to get down here and it's going to get hit a bump when you use the tear away it helps give a little bit of a bridge for the presser foot to glide across and then it won't feel it won't hit the bump the same and you i this is a little bit generous on the top too i might trim this down okay yeah i got it way too tall but that's okay so i'm going to take this on the top tautly too and we don't have to do a partial seam at the top because we don't have a zipper up there. So normally I would be doing a partial seam here. So 29 is going to go um, across the top and seam it together. So I'm going to run that and I'll be right back. All right. It was actually 29 and then um, we're going to do 30 now and I'm going to lay this uh, scrap tear away over here so that it's underneath the presser foot. You can see how thick it is here. Okay. And then it's going to form the line here so that when we get down here to the bottom, I don't know if you can see that, the bottom here, it doesn't um, get stuck in theory. So I have a 100 needle in here. Oops, see it? Even with a 100 needle, it's really thick. I don't know, it got stuck there. I'm going to have to restart. I'll be right back. Let's try this again. I may, it may be too thick, so. curving around just those thick parts but I use these vinyls so I can pre predict to you guys if you can use it or not okay now it's going to come over here and run a couple of travel stitches and that's just to help you um, get to the top over here. My machine definitely struggled on this material, so I would not recommend this um, vinyl. Um, and to be honest, I was planning on using cotton for that top panel. That would have helped a lot. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, and then I'll be right back. So, oh, that's step 31, and I'll be right back. Okay. She definitely struggled on that side, too. <laughs> yeah, I think we would have, because the bottom actually was fine. It was just the tolerance of all these layers at the top with the D-ring strap connectors and the hem from the top border. So before we unhoop anything, we want to turn to the back and make sure our lining didn't come ajar at all. Sometimes that happens even though you tape it down well. Something gets pushed up along the corners and then the lining comes ajar. And then you have a mess on your hands. So I'm removing all the tape. And remember we have our opening right here that from our lining that we're going to use. And then on the front of the hoop, let's remove all the tape. It definitely struggled with this one. I would not recommend this vinyl unless you have a multi-needle machine that's more powerful. I actually probably would recommend just doing cotton, interface cotton for this bag. Okay. 
So let's go ahead and hoop it now. And then we're going to trim to a one quarter inch seam allowance except for the bottom there where the opening is for the lining. We're going to leave that at half inch. My son has told me I've been at this for a long time. So I, my apologies that this is a long video, but it's a complicated bag. So that comes with a longer video. Good thing is you can always hit pause, take a break and come back. So I like to try and get my um, stabilizer as much as I can out of the seam. So I usually fold back the lining or the exterior, whichever is easiest and then trim it away. I saved these scraps. They are really great for doing applique, um, to reinforce applique, I should say. Like if you're doing a satin stitch applique design, slide this under the hoop, and it gives a little bit more strength to the satin stitching. So I don't wanna cut my vinyl off there. There we go. I'm using Kai Professional 7205 scissors. They are my absolute favorite. These are the eight inch dress makers. I'm thinking about trying the nine inch. I might order them. See, the glide will be longer on them, so I feel like I'll be able to cut faster. But I have a smallish hand, so I don't know if my hand will be big enough for them. So you, we have so many layers up in this section because remember we also have the lining for the front zipper pocket in there. So that's, this area was really, really difficult, really challenged my machine. Okay. And this actually probably just slide right off mostly because this is the area that we trimmed out earlier. Okay, so now I'm gonna trim. I like to do it from the exterior side. So just trim around one quarter inch. I usually do the sides first. And I warned you, this is gonna be a harder bag to turn because I'm gonna do the front here so I don't cut my lining off too short. Um, you have a lot of layers in here and a smaller churning hole. Okay. I normally don't trim off my D-ring strap connectors, but for the interest of time today, I'm just going to go ahead and trim it even. But you usually want to leave those extending out at least a quarter to a half an inch. Okay. And now down here where the lining is, you see where your, your seam was right here and here? Just go ahead and trim off at a little angle there. And then you can trim this extra off. And then I like to just go ahead and fold this lining at that seam. It just makes it easier to close it later and finger crease it. Okay. Now, to make the corners a little bit less bulky, I like to taper them, so I trim like this. I don't just do a 45 degree angle, I kind of taper into it. And down here, just go ahead and do a taper, a long taper like this. Okay, so when we're all done, this is what we should have. Okay, I'm gonna reach inside here now and turn the bag. So I usually find that if you get one of the corners, the top corners through first, the others will come behind it. So just kind of work it. And the, the lining seam is backstitched, but if you do accidentally pull it open, don't cry about it. You can fix it with a you know hand sewing or your glue stick or, or your glue. I mean, I close my bags with permanent 
uh, fabric glue. But you can use a uh, hand sewing, do a blind stitch there, or a ladder stitch, or you can use the double stick um, fusebo tape. I don't prefer that because I think it leaves a stiff feeling. And I mean, you're not gonna be at the bottom of the bag, but still, I just, I prefer the glue. The glue stays kind of flexible. Okay, so I got most of it through. And then just gently work on it. Now this other side will kind of slide right through then. All right. And then try and push these corners out a little bit. You won't be able to get them all the way out before we glue it closed, but you want to get out a little bit. Okay. And then here's our top. It's already opening up for us. Okay, but we're going to go ahead and glue this closed. And I just used some clips, some wonder clips and some glue. And I find that it takes effect within about... 60 seconds. Usually by the time I get the first part, uh, the last part glued, the first part is secure. And these are really deep gussets on here. So it might be a little bit harder to trim close than normal. See how deep that gusset is? So kind of just pull this out enough so you can get to that seam and I usually hold it so that the looser side is facing me. And then you still have that like original seam in there to look at. So that should be where you're gluing against. So I'm gonna go ahead and start this side first. And just put a layer of glue there. And it stays a little bit workable for a few minutes. And then here's the fold from when I folded it up earlier. Just pinch this down to get that folded piece in there against that seam. So just work on it a little bit and you'll get it. You just kind of want to reach that folded edge up into the glue. Okay, and then clip. Clip. Okay, and then we're gonna do the same thing on this side. And you see with this extra gusset here, it's a lot harder to do. But see, I can pinch it together like that. And I would be shocked beyond belief if anybody ever tries to turn this bag right side out to look at this closure. So in the great scheme of things, don't cry over it. Just get it as neat as you can. It's an in-the-hoop bag, so they're a lot harder to close because you're trying to close all the layers together. Whereas when you have a sewing bag, you don't have all the layers together like this. I always put the lid back on this glue right away because it likes to seep out the top. Okay, I'm gonna let that sit for just a few seconds and I'm gonna reach inside here and pull all the tape off and I'll be right back. Okay. So should be all set now, enough to turn it, and it'll glow, it'll dry permanently within about 24 hours. Okay, so now we wanna turn the bag to the right side. So just start folding it from the top and go down. Got my water bottle to test this. <laughs> and I got the big bottle, it may not fit that one, but we'll find out. This is a six by 10. Okay, just keep working. And then go ahead and push out your corners down here at the bottom and you just work them until they're about even on both sides. So it's gonna be a little bit kind of, it's almost wanting to be round on the bottom, but just work it until so they're about even on both sides. Okay. And then take all the tape off the gusset here, or the D-rings. All right, so there's our completed bag. 
And then here's the casing where you can put your drawstring through. There it is. All right, let's see if it fits this bottle. I don't know if it will. Oh, I have this rubber thing on the bottom. Let me take it off. So this is a six by 10, so it'll fit the skinnier bottles. So you'll need the seven by 10 for the fatter bottles. And then you can go ahead and feed your paracord through here, through the casing to use it as a drawstring, and then put one of those little crimps on the end. I have that, but I don't have it right handy. Now, I don't know if this pocket was gonna hold a phone. So this is my son's, son's iPhone SE. Let's see if it'll go in there. It's deep enough, but I don't think it's gonna, let's see, it might be easier if you put the phone in first and then the water bottle. Let's try that. No, so if you want, so I think for the six by 10, I'm gonna make a, a shorter pocket. And if you want a, a, the phone to fit, you'll need the seven by um, 11 or the eight by 11. Okay, so the six by 10 will hold the water bottle. Um, I'll put what size this is, it's 22 ounces, I think. And then you can put your strap on it and I'll have Grayson model it just a moment. <laughs> 